everyone, my name is Heidi and I'm coming to you from sunny Florida. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is episode three. I talk about all my knitting, my cross stitching and a little bit of crocheting on this channel. If you are a new viewer, welcome. I hope you like it and thanks for stopping by. If you do like it, click the like button and the subscribe button and you can see what I'm up to next. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back and chatting with me. I really appreciate all your support and I'm having a lot of fun doing this with you. Um, if you'd like to find me other than YouTube, you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram at Yarnit Heidi. And there you can see what I'm up to too when I'm not on YouTube. Um, anyway, I've had a great week with a lot of my stitching. I've had the good, the bad, and last night there was a lot of ugly and I'll tell you about it later. If you guys have any questions or comments, um, please state below so I can see um, how I'm doing and what you'd like to know. Um, whether it's knitting, crocheting, or cross-stitching related, you can comment below or just anything in general. I don't care, I'm pretty open about anything. So um, anyway, it's been a good week with all that stuff and I'll share some of it with you, or most of it. Here we go, let's get started. Uh, let's see, my finished object number one is this felted pumpkin. This is from my yarn night subscription with Vicki Cow, Vicki, excuse me, Vicki Howell. And um, I get this once a month. Uh, sometimes I skip a month, but once a month. And I definitely wanted this pumpkin. Um, it's a felted pumpkin. The yarn is called Yam Zombie Screams Yarn. And the colorway is Copperhead. I used a size 11 circular needle. Um, that was fun, but not that much fun because with the size 11, it was so hard to get the yarn over the cord to the needle. It was a little bit agony at times, but um, it was short lived because this was a short project. Um, I stuffed it with fiber fill, but before that I felted it. Now felting is a process where you uh, shrink the wool to get it to a smaller size. And you put it in a wash machine and you let it on hot on the wash machine. In the wash machine, you let it agitate for a few minutes and then you run it cool and you'll see that your uh, knitted item has felt it gotten smaller. So anyway, um, on my wash machine here where I live, it says in the pattern to just agitate for 10 minutes and then cool. My machine doesn't do that, but they did tell you when I looked it up that you could hand felt it. So what I did was, is I put in hot, hot water um, in a bowl and as hot as I could stand it with my hands. And I rubbed it together aggressively, really rough for a few minutes. And then I ran it for on the cool water to rinse. And you know what? It felt it. It went down and shrunk. I stuffed it. I hot glued a stick in. And in the in the subscription box, she gives you a template for a leaf and a piece of felt. I cut that out and I used one of my multicolor, like fall color floss to um, make a line in the middle of the leaf. You could also put fabric. You can do your leaf as you want it. Anyway, I had so much fun doing this. I love it. And now it's part of my collection. So that was the felted pumpkin through the Yarnier subscription with Vicki Howell. Check her out. She has such great boxes every month. Okay. The next finished project is from my Spooky Socks Knit Along. I love this. Yesterday was Halloween. I don't uh, go out trick-or-treating or anything like that. And um, I just put them on for show along with my pumpkins. Uh, I live in Florida. I'm not going to wear socks too often. So I didn't wear them, but I love making socks. It doesn't matter. I was contemplating get, about giving these to somebody, but I love them too much to give them to somebody. Anyway, these socks are made with the Moon Glow Yarn Company, and the colorway is Crazy Cauldron Sock Set by the Crazy Sock Lady. And the pattern is called uh, Dripping Drop Socks by Kristen Drucker. Love this pattern. I would do it with other colors. So easy. 
top pattern didn't include the toe being a different color, but I wanted to do it because of Halloween. Anyway, I used a size one, 2.25 millimeter, two circular needles, and a, um, a slip stitch gusset heel. With my heels, I make it a little different. I, I knit three stitches at the beginning and I knit three stitches at the end of the round for the heel. Anyway, that's it. That's my uh, dip and drop socks, which I love so much. These are my, one of my favorites now. Hang them back up there. Goodbye socks. Oops, <laughs> fell down. Okay, the next finished project is slippers I made for my sister. Cozy slipper pattern. That's what the pattern is called. My sister, she um, uh, messaged me with this pattern. Um, I looked it up, it's not on Ravelry. The only place I can get it is on a YouTube video to see how it's done. But the, the, the designer wrote it out on this pattern. Um, and I have to say, the pattern was not so great. I think the um, designer is from another country. So they interpret or they write things a little bit different. I ripped these little slippers out three times. The first time she says in the pattern that um, increase 20 stitches. Okay, so I'm thinking either front to back increase or make one increase. Well, when after I looked at it, I said, this doesn't look like the picture. How increases mean cast on an additional 20 stitches? Okay, rip number one. Okay. Then for decreases, she says decrease 20, something and knit two together, knit two together. Wrong go. That one was um, a bind off, knit two together, put, put it back on the needle, knit the next two together like that. So that was rip number two. Okay, then I'm knitting along and she says, uh, stocking it throughout the pattern, the whole pattern. And I'm looking at her picture. And I was like, that doesn't look like stocking it. That's garter. I already almost completed the whole thing when I said, this is not, this is not stocking it on the pattern. What I was doing was stocking it, showed all the knit and then on the other side, pearl, but hers was not. Rip the whole thing down, rip number three. Finally, did everything the way I finally interpreted it and ta-da, finished the socks. She also had where you could add um, any kind of embellishment up on top. That was easy, that was the easiest part. All you have to do is thread a needle with some matching um, thread and you put a bead on, go down and the indents on the top of the slipper. Easy peasy that part. So. The yarn is from Cascade Yarns. It's called Anchor Bay. It's 50% cotton and 50% merino, superwash merino wool. It knit up so nice. Even though it's black, I tell you, it was a sturdy yarn. It was easy to see. No problem with that. It was the pattern. Other than that, the yarn was great. And um, I tried them on. They fit me good. I hope they fit my sister. She's a little bit bigger there for her. And, uh, that's it. I will do this again. It hardly uses up any yarn. My skein, I could do about another two or maybe three pairs of slippers. Now that I got it straight, I could do them again. The only thing I'm not a big fan is you do have to uh, do a seam. This seam came out great on the bottom. I don't know what I did, but this seam, not so good on the bottom. But it's on the bottom. I don't care. Hope my sister doesn't care. I don't think she'll care either. But the next time I'll be a little more um, pay attention to the seaming on the on the socks, slipper socks when I make up the next time. So that was that. Um, I like doing them other than those little blurps, but now I know how to do it. Okay, the next thing I've been doing is I start my gift giving for the holidays because um, I don't want to be crazy in the last couple of weeks in December. There's a pattern I've been working on for a bit. I used it several times and I really love it. So I figured let's make it for the holidays, like holiday colors. It is 
a dishcloth. And it, it looks like one of those peppermints that you get, the red and white peppermints. I love this pattern. This is such a fun pattern. It's called the Shake It dish, Dishcloth. And you also have the option to make um, coasters. Okay, I'll show you. Oh, here's a coaster. I made a coaster too. Either one, you can make it. And during the holidays, what I like to do when I make a dishcloth is I'll make the dishcloth and then I'll wrap it around some dishwasher liquid and put a ribbon around it and I give it as a gift. This dishcloth pattern is by um, Very Pink Knits, Stacy Perry. And um, the yarn I used is called Circular. The brand is Circulo Natural Cotton. It's 100% cotton cotton let me see virgin brazilian cotton it's a beautiful cotton i love this pattern so much that i'm gonna do a class on it at my local yarn shop called sheep villas in lauder hill florida i'm gonna do the this class there and um if you're from south florida come visit me check it out and if you do the sign up for the class either online or in person uh sheep villas will give you a a gift for signing up. I like this to teach this because you learn how to do provisional cast on, which really isn't that hard. Did a provisional cast on, and it's not that many stitches, and you also learn how to do short rows. So if you've never done short rows, this is a great pattern to learn how to do that. And this pattern is addicting because you change colors. You don't have to cut colors. You just carry it along. You don't ever have to cut the color. So that's why I love this pattern. And it's addicting. And you could do three colors. You could do a rainbow dishcloth. You can do whatever you want. And the pattern is fantastic. It tells you how to make a, a smaller dishcloth. It tells you how to do a dishcloth without a pico edge, because this is a pico edge. And the same thing with the coasters. You could do a pico edge, or you could do it without. You can make a bigger di coaster. You can make a smaller dishcloth. It is a great pattern. And I also made one for like Hanukkah. So Christmas, ha Hanukkah, any holiday you celebrate or just a housewarming gift, this is great. So anyway, check it out. And if you'd like to come and visit me and, and take a class on how to make something so beautiful as a gift and fun, come join me at Sheep Villas in Lauder Hill, Florida. So that was it. That's my finished projects of one, two, three, four. Not bad for two weeks time. Okay, works in progress. Um, not too many because I finished a lot off my needles. So I can start a couple of things which I did. Well, the first one is something I've been working on. This will be you know, quite a long time is my fences blanket, a baby blanket. So again, I, um, I did about three inches from here to there. Okay, this is 100% acrylic. It's made with Carlton yarn, a green color. I think it's called like sagebrush. And um, knit, 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 just keep doing this. So I've gotten a little further you know, small bites, eventually I'll get the blanket done. So I like this pattern. Anything else I could say? Just a needle size, size seven. I It's on circular, but it's a straight back and forth, back and forth, forth knitting. Both sides kind of look the same. And that's it. Plugging away at this one. Okay. I started a new project. And um, it's a let's see it's a baby sweater another one this one is called entrica okay and the the designer is lisa chemery the yarn so i guess is um the yarn is from it's probably from 30 who knows 40 years ago my senior gave it to me that i visit it's called vivona Oh no, excuse me, Savona yarn. It's 100% acrylic and the color is cream. 
I never heard of this company. She had it in her stash. She was getting rid of stuff. It's, I don't know how old it is, to be honest with you. I don't know where you can get it. I never heard of it. Maybe it's still around. If you guys know, I'd like to know about it. If you know, it's called Sivona, C-I-V-O-N-A, yarn. Maybe you know. If so, comment below. By the way, anything I talk about will be linked down below. And uh, if not, just make a comment, let me know, and I'll, I'll add it in or let you know personally. Okay, so it looks like with this, you start at the neck and go down. It knits up so nice. I'm doing a 12 month. This, I'm working on the body now. This is a, for a uh, 12 month. Originally I was gonna do six month and my senior said, why do a six month? They're gonna grow, as soon as they're born they grow. And she's right, so I'm gonna do for a year. Anyway, I like this pattern. It's called Entricat. Somebody recommended to me, she said she did a lot of them. So I said, let me try it. So I went and I, I bought the pattern and I like it so far. This, this Progress Keeper, so cute. Let me see, since I'm working upside down. Is an owl from Three by the Sea Designs. It's so sweet. I wanted something a little fall-like on my knitting and um, that's what I put, picked. I bought that from Three Brothers Seeds. Then I have another one that, that somebody gifted me. Um, she's Knittercast, she has a podcast, Knittercast, and she also is a designer. And um, because I tested it, she sent me this, this progress, actually a stitch marker, and it looks like it's engraved like the state of Florida on there. I love it. And then just a ball of yarn for my other stitch marker. Hey, that's uh, Entricot by Lisa Chemery. Having fun with that one. Okay. Oh, remember the last time? I don't, well, for you that were new, uh, the last time I podcasted, I mentioned about uh, charity knitting that I do with knittedknockers.org and that my senior and I do that together and we've done so many and I called out to my my audience here if they know other cha knitting charities because we've done so many knitted knockers we'd like to spread the wealth and do some others so she had a whole list and thank you so much for that and I picked one it's called knots for love and this is for um, people that are struggling with cancer cancer patients and you can either make a beanie or a hat or a blanket. So on the website, they give you so many free patterns for knitting and for crocheting. So many, like 20 for each one. So I was looking and looking and I found one. And they also give a whole list of acceptable yarns that you can use to make it because really they want something that's not gonna be uncomfortable for the uh, person that's getting the, the item. So I went and I looked and it really was easy to figure out. I found a hat and let me see what it's called. It's called Jeans, what is it called? Um, Jeans Twisted Rib Cap. I'll link it below uh, where you can find it on the website, knotsforlove.org. And I started it and this is it so far. Right? And the accept she had so many acceptable yarns and affordable yarns because it is for charity and you know you know you know when you knit for charity you don't you don't want a your really good yarn to get ruined by anybody. You put all that work and money into it. So I got one that was from, you know, one of the big box stores and it is Yarn B is the brand and this is called Glowing. Their, their uh, base glowing. Isn't it pretty? Jeez, I love it. And the colorway is purple multi. I could see that. It is gorgeous. Anyway, just started on the ribbing. I really love it. And the needle size is for the ribbing size six and then for the body is size eight. I just started putting it on the body. So this is size eight that it's on. And it's a circular, round and around we go. Anyway, I'll let you know how that comes out. This will be my first hat. I hope to do many to help with this organization. 
So if you want to join me, let's do it together. It's from the Knots for Love. Pick out one there. So many to choose from. And uh, start knitting. Oh, my, my stitch marker. I love this rose. This is from the Nitty Witch. Love it. So that's what I'm doing now for charity. My hat. Okay. Now, you know, with knitting, sometimes I call it the good, the bad, and the ugly. Well, I was still going really good. It was going so good on my shellography. If you're working on shellography, you're probably far into it. I don't know if it's a mystery anymore, but if you don't want to check it out, you can go, you know, elsewhere. I'm not on clue four. Walk away. I'm only on clue two. Most of you are far into your other parts of the shellography by Stephen West. This is a knit along for all of you that don't know uh, by Stephen West that once a year does and involves many countries that get involved with it. It's a big, big shawl that he uh, designs and everybody gets on the bandwagon and this is my first year doing it myself and I'm loving it until last night. I was like, oh, this is going so good. It looks beautiful. I haven't gotten stumped. This is it. If you don't want to see, walk away. But I'm sure most of you are far along. Okay, this is it. I'm only on clue two. I was getting, I was plugging away, getting far. And then I got to this one section called the triangle section. And um, I watched this tutorial and he says, you know, pick up a stitch from 10 below. I did that and you let one loose stitch loose off the needle. Willy nilly, let it drop, let the stitch drop, 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 be adventurous, be risky. Big mistake with me. I don't know what I did, but that stitch dropped, drop, drop, and it went into, who knows, the black hole of my, my knitting project because it, it didn't, it let loose and it went down, down, down. I had a rip at least 10 rows or more. And I was up to 1.30 in the morning doing it. Oh my goodness. This thing got me mad. It was my first blitz of this shawl. But I couldn't help it. I just had to stay up. I was like, I got to see if I could find out, you know, pick it up so I don't have to rip all these rows. I still think I have to rip one more row because last night it was 1.30. I said, I got to get to bed. I'm exhausted. I'm just going to make it worse for myself. So I put it together. I, I put it down. I said, that's it. You're done for the night. So later today, tonight, I'll try to start where I left off and, um, fix my mistake and look at the video again and try to zone in on, you know, getting it done correctly. Anyway, if any of you have had troubles with those triangles, let me know. Give me any hints to make it easier because letting loose that lo stitch that he says, let it go. I was like, oh, he's being adventurous. Let me be adventurous. Well, it really took me on a journey I did not want to go on. So anyway, I'll work on it. It's coming out beautiful. I'm the kind of person, I do not give up. I give it my all. So I will not let go of this. I'll continue it later on. Okay, goodbye, showography. All right. All right, so here's my next item that I've uh, been working on. My cross stitch, my wedding sampler for my son and his fiance who are getting married next September. Cross stitching it's not a, a one, two, three thing. So I'll show you what I did, how it's going. It's hard to see a lot of this because it's white, but I did this little section. See this little section? That's where I'm at, okay? So not a lot done. Believe it or not though, that is like, <laughs> like, an hour of work, just that little section, maybe even more. This here, right here. This here, about an hour. Because you have to look at a chart, you have to make sure it's placed 
and I'm being extra, extra careful about um, stitching this because if I make one mistake, it could kind of like be off on the whole, on the whole um, sampler. I could try to fudge that, but I, I don't like to fudge if I don't have to. It's too stressful for me. So I'm going to, I'm very careful to make sure my stitches are placed in the right spot. So I do take my time to make sure that um, everything is right. I'll, I'll count a couple of times to make sure that the count is right on my counted cross stitch sampler. This sampler I got from Etsy. I'll put the link below of where I got it. Um, it's, I like it because it's only two or three colors and most of it's white and a little bit of like a gold color in there and a tiny bit of red. But one, two, three with that. But the, the actual pattern, you do have to pay attention because you want it lined up correctly because both sides are symmetrical. So I don't want anything off on that. So I'll link that below if anybody ever wants to do a wedding sampler. So that is all my works in progress. I have just a little bit of acquisitions to show. Okay, um, let's see. With my uh, cross-stitching, I, I belong on a group on Facebook for cross-stitching. And this year for the fall, they did a swap. A swap is when, um, you know, um, you, they send you something and you send them something cross-stitch related. So this year they had something fun and you could do it a theme of either autumn or Halloween. I wanted to do autumn, that way I can have it all, all season long, for Thanksgiving, Halloween, all of that. And uh, other people pick just Halloween, which is fine too. So I picked autumn and you go on this website called Elfster and they pick somebody for you to, to buy for and they, and you get picked also. So I picked one person and it happened to be kind of locally about three hours away. They, they, they got me. So I'm going to show you what they sent me. I love it. I've been saving it to show you. And after that, I'm putting it out because I love it. And it's a lot of fun. Doing something like this is a lot of fun. And there was a, a price limit, but everybody seems to always go over, including me, myself. And I'll show you what it is. Came in this box. Okay. Um, most of it is cross-stitch related. And some of it is just autumn related, like this first thing. First of all, I gotta show you the card she sent. Look how sweet that is. What a nice card. I don't wanna throw this out, it's too nice. Cards like this, I hate throwing out. So nice, and she wrote me a nice little card, you know, note in there. But the card is so sweet. Can't throw that out. Okay, some things are not stitch related, um, like this. Look how pretty. Fall is my favorite color. I agree. A nice, you know, dishcloth to use. So I love that. Okay, the other thing, not stitch related, is a candle. I love candles. This one is spice cider. So smells so nice. I use candles every night. It gives me that calming effect. I light a candle every night, so this is perfect. So that's the other thing. Okay, let's see. Okay, now this nice ribbon, fall-like. I'll use that sometime or another. I'll save it, I'll use it for the right time. Like that. And then some autumn floss, which I used on my pumpkin on the leaf. It came at the perfect time. Really like that floss. And then my favorite thing is, I gotta show you, anytime somebody makes me something or, or makes anybody else, I really love it. I appreciate it. I know the work that goes into it. So I love handmade stuff. It means a lot to me. They put their effort into it. They put their love into it, their time into it. 
and their money into it. Any handmade item from somebody is well loved by me and it makes my heart go pitter patter. So she put this in there and she made this little pillow. It's my favorite thing in the box, the little pumpkin in the middle. I love this. I'm going to put this out for display. It is beautiful. She stitched it and look at the back. Nice fabric in the back. She stuffed it. She put it together. These things make me so happy. I love them. Handmade stuff means the world to me. I mean, somebody took the time. They care about you. They're, they have pride in what they do and they have pride to give it to you. I love this. It's going right on here for now. So beautiful. I appreciate that. And, um, you know, and I don't know how other people feel about what I send them, but I know I love things like that. Handmade is the best. So that's what I got. When I, that is totally happy mail. I was looking forward to this. I couldn't wait. And when I got it, ooh, jump for joy, to be honest with you. I'm going to do this next year if they have it. Maybe they'll have a, a holiday one for, for Christmas, Hanukkah. I'm participating because that is fun to do. Um, I sent some Halloween. My person wanted Halloween, so I went to the local corset shop and I got a Halloween kit, um, some patterns, some floss, some needles, a little thing of scissors, and um, I hope they liked it too as much as I like mine. Okay, another thing I got, I, I, I got this at a quilting show, um, is a project bag that somebody made. It's like a see-through, which I love. They put fabric on the bottom, fabric here and a zipper, and a hang, a holder, handle. Love this bag. I got it at a quilting show. So these are all my acquisitions, not a lot. I don't know why, I just didn't find anything, but I'll tell you about life, talking into a quilting show. Last week I went um, with my sister, she's a quilter, and actually two sisters are quilters, and I went with her to the quilting show. I appreciate going to things like that. Quilts are beautiful. I cannot do it, I'm not a quilter. I do not enjoy cutting and measuring and all that stuff, but I, I, value and appreciate people that do that because I know all the work that's involved. So this is the second time I went with her to a quilting show and I am amazed by what these people can do with making quilts. It amazes me. I love seeing it and you know when I'm there I said oh what could I be interested. I managed to find some things. I bought a couple of things. I bought that bag. I bought something for Hanukkah. Uh, votive light holders that they had stitched together. I could find anything in any, in any store, frankly, but the quilting show was a lot of fun. They had raffles that you could win quilts or baskets that people donated or made up to uh, put in. Um, I, we bought some, I didn't win obviously, but at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you some of the quilts that I saw. They are outstanding. It just amazes me that people are that talented and I'm a little jealous because I wish I could do that, but I can't, but I'm happy with what I do. I love what I do and that's okay. So I enjoyed myself at the end of this video. I'm going to put up those pictures from the quilting show and you'll see some that were really outrageous. Okay. What about life? So that was la last week and this past weekend. The weather was gorgeous. Perfect Floridian weather. Not too hot, not too cold, no rain. It was beautiful. So one day went bike riding because it was perfect weather for that. And the other day, yesterday, we went to the beach. Not crowded because it was Halloween. Not crowded. The water was calm, crystal clear. It was gorgeous. What a, when I lay there like that, actually sitting in a chair, knitting, I was knitting, I'm like saying to myself, this is the life. It can't get better than this. 
looking at the ocean and it was calm. It wasn't crowded and knitting. And I even had some kind of drink, um, Mike's Hard Lemonade, but it was black cherry flavor. Oh my goodness. Between that, my knitting and watching the ocean, I was in seventh heaven. It was beautiful. It made me refreshed, made me feel good at the end of the day. And um, what a day it was. So this is my knitting journey for this week. My cross stitching got some done. I am going to start a little crochet project in the future for holiday gift giving. Stay tuned for that. So I hope you liked my podcast this week. If you did, press the like and subscribe button. I'd love to see you next time. I'd, I'd love to hear from you what you're working on because as much as I want to inspire you guys, I want to be inspired and I am easily inspired. That's how I end up doing all these new projects because I see what other people are doing. So comment below and let me know what you're up to. So have a great week. It was great chatting with you. May you all have peace and love in your life every day. See you next time.